Hey everyone, my name is Josh Simpson and I am the veteran CPA and owner of Simpson & Simpson Accounting and Tax Firm. Today, our back on track episode is gonna be sell every day. You might be wondering, why in the heck is an accountant giving a talk on sales? That doesn't make any sense. Well, sales is my favorite part of business and a big reason why our firm continues to grow. I've been on hundreds of sales calls over the last couple years. Some have been great, some have been good, some have been okay, and some have been awful. And I wanted to share some tips on the do's and don'ts of how to grow your business in sales. As I was doing many sales calls, I quickly realized what people needed help with. They were constantly complaining about, um, they couldn't reach their CPA. They've emailed and they called, and it's been a month or two and they can't reach them. If a business to be successful, the business owner has to make one or two choices. Either the business owner is gonna sell and let the rest of his team do the work, or the business owner is gonna do the work and then have a sales professional selling every day. And that business owner could have a sales professional that's an employee, a contractor, or even a sales team. I love outside sales teams. I get, I get help with the outside sales team for our firm as well. And so for being on hundreds of sales calls, several each day often, these are some of the do's and don'ts I've learned over time, and I hope they're helpful to grow your business. Number one, don't waste your time. This is the most important thing. Number one, don't waste your time selling a product or service that no one's buying. If you've been selling your product or service for a couple months and you still don't have any bites and no one seems interested, don't think that's gonna change your own. Stop, sell something else that people want. For example, I love pickle juice. I, you know, they say drinking pickle juice, all that salt, it feels great on the muscles and helps you recover faster. Would I sell pickle juice as a company? Hell no, definitely not. I don't think anybody would buy that. I wouldn't waste my time. Number two, focus on sales every day. No matter what you do, no matter how well you run your business, no matter how well your employees do, clients are gonna leave your business. They might wanna go to another company to try another product or service. They might want a lower price. They might move, or maybe they just hit hard financial times. But keep the relationship going well and on good terms because often they come back. I've been pleasantly surprised that clients I thought would never come back, come back and we're back doing business again. Number three, people buy for their reasons, not yours. I learned this from my sales manager when I worked at a, as a financial advisor. So remember, no matter how good the sales uh, meeting is, whether you use Jedi sales techniques to get people to buy, it doesn't matter. People are still gonna buy for their reasons, not yours. So be honest about what you have and what you don't. And if, they, if you don't meet what they need, don't worry about it, keep moving on. Number four, let the prospect do most of the talking. Too often sales professionals drown out the conversation. They get on a sales call and they just talk, talk, talk about how great their product or service is, not even knowing what the prospect really needs help with. So again, the prospect should be talking more than you are during the sales meetings. Let them talk about what they need help with, what they're looking for, what kind of product or service they're looking for, and then ask them even more questions to understand even further what they need help with. And then once that's done, then you tell them what you have to offer and you let them know your price in the meeting and then ask them if they wanna move forward. I like to get all that stuff out of the way because if you do a sales meeting and even if it's good and you haven't told them your price yet, they might be expecting something lower. So as quick as you can, get the price out there so you know, make sure you're not wasting your time. Number five, get paid something up front. I see too many business owners that don't realize they can run their business the way they want to. Get paid, you're in a business to get paid for your product and services. And especially on, you know, it might be a small, if a small product or service, you might not get paid up front. You might get paid in the back end. But if it's a big project, a big product, a big service, get paid something up front. If the, the prospect can't pay you something up front, when, then it's not a good fit in the first place. Don't do business with them. Number six, keep your sales pipeline full. When you're selling every day, you're gonna keep your sales pipeline full and you're not gonna be stressed about that one big golden client. If you're going through the day thinking about that one meeting you had that was so awesome 
and you think the, this, this client's gonna pay for your services and bring you lots of revenue and you're obsessing and you're emailing them over and over again, that's a, that's a bad sign. It's better to do many meetings, many sales meetings than one just really good one. Number seven, stick to your sales price minimum. People are gonna try to drive you down your prices. They say they won't have money when they do, or you know, maybe they do have money, but you know, you can do some pro bono work, but you can't get suckered into over and over again driving down your prices. Stick to your minimum. Obviously, a company like Mercedes or Louis Vuitton, whatever, they're not gonna they're not gonna lower their prices when they're selling high quality goods and services. So stick to those minimums. I know for us. For a business tax return, S-Corp return, no matter how small the business is, we can't go below 750 for a business return and 500 for a personal return. Now your profit loss is gonna tell you what you need to sell. You always wanna have enough profit to pay your personal bills and save money for the future. And the last thing, number eight, keep your, uh, your initial sales calls to 30 minutes and on the phone. Within, within 30 minutes, that's really all you need to find out what the prospect needs help with. Too often, business owners, and myself, I've learned the hard way, I used to spend all this time on prospects and they still said no. So it's better to keep it short. One time I had a, a nonprofit that I was so excited about, I was gonna work with them, and I spent an hour with their accounting manager and analyzed their financials. I spent an hour with the treasurer. I spent an hour with the president. And after all that time, we did do business together and I got paid nothing. I lost money. So don't lose money. It's better to do many sales meetings and don't look desperate. If you're chasing a prospect down for the sale, you look desperate. And when you appear desperate, people aren't going to want to do business with you. Well, again, uh, thank you for tuning in today. And remember, always be selling. If it's not you, have someone your team is. Keep the clients coming in and uh, feel free to reach out if you've got any questions. Hey everyone, we're watching Back on Track. Marketing Back on Track is having the right team. You want the right team doing your bookkeeping on your QuickBooks Online. You want the right team helping you with your quarterly estimated tax payments. You want the right team answering your tax questions. I can't tell you how many times I've had a new client say, I haven't heard from my accountant, my CPA in one month, two months. It takes a team to do your accounting and taxes, not just one person. We have multiple people who will best serve you and make sure you help you those great financial decisions.